Selamat pagi, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Ampun, ampun, ampun. Many of you do not know that in the old days, in traditional Malay, in the palace, when you speak before a king, you are supposed to be ampun tuanku, ampun tuanku. This is also to apologize beforehand if my words hurt your feelings because many of my friends said, Johnson, be gentle, huh? be gentle, because they have tasted my sharp, sarcastic comments on them. This morning, we are in the presence of the King, Jesus Christ. Christmas is coming, and we, are we ready for the King? We are all in the family of God, but even though we are proud of our spiritual heritage, we should be proud of our heritage from our parents. My sharing is also a sharing on appreciation. Uh, why my name Nghe Johnson? Nghe is a Fu Chao surname. In Chinese, it is Ni. So can you imagine Ni 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 Wo Ai Ni? You remember the song? <laughs> and Ni in Chinese, those who know Chinese, Lan Zi Bian Er Zi, Son of Man. What an app name, me. So, my name is Johnson because I was born in Johor Bahru, Roshan. So, my father, with his sense of humor, called me Johnson. And maybe he wanted a boy. La. But nobody can pronounce a nge. Or you can call nga. Or you can get nge. Or you can go gay. I saw somebody with nge, but the Chinese name is ni. Imagine Peter Gay. But because my students found it very hard to pronounce nge, 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 they prefer to call me Miss J, Auntie Johnson, or Miss Johnson. And my nieces, six nieces and two nephews, call me Kuku. And then my friend said, We know you are Kuku, but why do they call you Kuku? <laughs> All right. So my father, my late father, was born in Sitiawan. His Mother, father, his grandfather, came over from Fuzhou, Gutian, to Malaysia because the Methodist missionary went there and told them, you come to Sitia Wan, we give you five acres of land. So my grandfather jumped on the boat and brought my grandmother, and my grandmother was married, but I don't know whether she was a widow or she was abandoned by her husband. So with a son, they came over to Sitia Wan, and there they met my father, Nghe Nik Tung. The Fuzhou uh, hierarchy is seeing the middle name, you know straight away what generation you are. My father is Yi, means Jade. My uh, name should be Nghe. And who, guess who has the same name as me? The Minister of Local Government. Nghe Ko Ming. I'm not claiming uh, I'm related to him. He doesn't know me from Adam or Eve. But his middle name, Ke, Coca Cola, Ke. <laughs> so I should be Nghe Ke something. But my father gave me Johnson, Roshan. So my father came over, uh, was born in City Awan. His father was already a Methodist, maybe in name, maybe not in practice. But John Sung came to City Awan. And there my father committed his life to Jesus Christ. So my father was a born again Christian and he studied in ACS and he moved to Johor Bahru to work in the education office. There, he met my mother. My mother, Sing Li Xiang, was from Chaozhou in the Guangdong province. She was a free thinker and a member of Kuomintang. At that time, China was communist. So my mother also jumped on a boat to escape and came over to Singapore. She was an intellectual. And then she came to Singapore to stay with her brother. They were from a rich background. And she came over to JB and taught in Fun Yu High School. Fun Yu School, that time no high school. When she met my father, they got married, I think in the Presbyterian Church. Because at that time, JB doesn't have a Methodist church yet. Just check, huh? in the 50s. And my mother always said, 
I married your father, I became a Methodist. But when my father passed away, my mother quickly went back to the Presbyterian Church. All right? In Moa, we were attending the Living Waters Church. I have my friend there, Dr. Chan da, Tan Chaoe, who was my se- uh, junior in Form 6 and also in Holy Light Church. And my mother was a disciplinarian. She, in your shine, why I gave you the shine is page 5, there's a tribute to my mother. She was not that kind of mother who says you must read your Bible, you must what, but she insisted we go to church. And she always said, you work and give your best to God. And you must have integrity. She doesn't gossip. She's not critical of people. And when I simply criticise people, I'll get a dirty look from her. And from both of them, I received this heritage. And my mother's legacy lived, and my father's lived in us. Because there's one thing I learned from her. Even though she was from China, she was a patriotic Malaysian. When we, in the old days, when we go cinema, we must stand up when they, they play the national anthem. We will all sit down. My mother will pull us up and stand attention to listen to the national anthem. And like I said, my mother has a zest for life, if you read uh, in your shine. But, and I, I like to say they are not exactly the kind of Christian who you know, are committed you know, were active in church. But in 1967, I, they lost three children in a drowning accident. But their faith continued. And this impacted me because even though they are not the kind of Christian you see, you know, active and so on, but after that tragedy, they were able to carry on going to church. In my heart, I was always saying that you are born a Methodist, you better die a Methodist. But in between, i like to tell you that besides my parents' heritage, i like to tribute my parents because they are teachers. I became a teacher, not because of that. I, how many of you want to be a teacher? You want to be engineer, doctors, huh? and so on, lawyer. But when I was studying in Sagamat, I grew up in Sagamat and attended the MYF there. I must say the MYF has produced three pastors. Pastor Peter C, Covenant Church in Kuala Lumpur, Pastor Virgis George in the church in JB, and Pastor Ong Siu Huat, a pastor in London, Chinese church. And when I was studying in Form 6, I went to a different town, Moa Town. There I was liberated. My parents are not watching over me. I went wild. While in the sense that Sunday I'll go to church, but in from six classes, I'll go to the upper six boys' class, you know, the admits class got lots of boys and chat with them. And then in the evening, I'll cycle to Tanjong Seaside and date <coughs> the boys. And as a result of that, two years of Sunday go to church, Living Water Church, the rest of the day I live for myself. As a result of that, my form six result came out. Glorious result. E E O O. The donkeys E E O O. With E E O O, you know, I can't get into any university. And during my time, it is University of Malaya. All right? The one and only. Don't have private colleges now, you can pay money and get in. But the Lord was grace, grace, gracious and merciful. You won't believe it. I got a federal teaching scholarship which not only allowed me to get into University of Malaya and gave me money, stipend. And so, when I was in MU, I said, I better be good. Every Sunday, I'll go to the Trinity Methodist Church because why? The bus comes and fetch me. All right? Like, the rest of the days, again, I'm back to, I leave myself. Saturday night in my college got disco and I was on the committee. So every Saturday night, you know, I'll be just going away. And then on Sunday, I sit at the Trinity Church, all right, being a very good girl. And uh, I would also like to share with you, use your talent when young for God. Because when I was young and not so young, when I was young, my mother sent me for piano lesson, vocal lesson. I reached piano lesson grade 8, all right? I used to play in the church because... 
you know, no choice. And then I played for BSF. But in my heart, I was saying, Ayo, it's a torture. Have to practice. All right? I must remind you, if you don't make use of your talent or your skill, God will take it away. Now I can't play do re mi even. All right? And I used to be able to write. All right? In your hands, it's a magazine called Instep. I was in a part-time worker for Teacher Christian Fellowship. And I was able to write. And in Shine, page 5, it's a tribute to my mother. Appreciate your parents when they are alive with you. Don't wait until they die and write a beautiful tribute. For my mother, when she was alive, I wrote an essay to New Straits Time Mother of the Year Award. I forgot which year. And she went to KL to collect the prize. All right? For that, I was grateful. But after she passed away, I wrote the tribute to her. Also, all right, make use of your talent. I was an English teacher. Now, my grammar has gone to the dogs or the cats. And my pronunciation, I had, God gave me, God rewarded me very, very much. You know, when my first posting was Kalantan, I went willingly because God has given me the scholarship. But today, there are many people, students of mine, who the Malaysian government sent to England. They don't come back. They don't even serve it. But one of my students came back, served it, and she went back and became a doctor. Now she's a doctor in Newcastle, so she looked forward. All right? So a doctor can be a teacher, a teacher can be a doctor. But what I'm saying is, don't waste your talent, don't waste your skill, make use of them, and give to God the glory. Serve in your own way. Children ministry in this church, worship, all right? Prayer ministry, shine, but be humble about it and be faithful. Because sometimes we tend to say, nobody appreciates me, so I boast a bit. Today I'm on an ego trip telling you that, you know, I can write, and my, I edited that magazine, all right? But I want to stress that I belong to Teacher Christian Fellowship, where we are out to encourage you to be teachers. Parents here, give your child, especially a son, to teaching. What is teaching? Such a lowly profession. But let me tell you, my government pension is more than the starting pay of a doctor. All right? Because the government pays your pension until you die. And then you get one lump sum when you die. I'm not looking forward to that yet. <laughs> All right? So, in, pre, uh, in the old days, when I first posted to Kelantan, my first, sorry, I'm taking a bit long, Dr. Sito, my apologies. Uh, in Kelantan, I went to the Gospel Hall Church, where I learned submission, because in the old days, about 40 years ago, Gospel Hall Church was wear scarf. And only men preach. Women be submissive. Sit there, wear your scarf. But the warmth of the church, all right, really embraced me. On the right, I was in a little town called Pasipute. To the right, I take a taxi to Kotobaru Gospel Church. To the left, I take a taxi to Presbyterian Church, which is more free. Yeah? And uh, then, I would like to say that God moved me from, Joh from Kelantan back to Johor from Johor back to KL, from KL to Malacca. All over the place, God led me. God went before me. And my plea is more teachers, more of you become teachers because we have 400 mission schools in Malaysia and many are without heads. Once you don't have a Christian head, the school ethos change. They take down the cross. You are not allowed CF, Christian Fellowship. When I was in the teacher's college, thank God, both teacher's college in Johor Bahru, in KL, we have a CF. In 85 to 88, uh, sorry, in the 80s, I was in the Johor Bahru Teacher's College uh, Fellowship. Today, there are still students from that batch who connect with me. And in KL, the group of Christians there were so committed. And uh, last two years, I like to say that I went through a medical ordeal. In 2020, I met, had an accident. After the accident, my brother took me to the doctors. One of them diagnosed me as having brain seizures. 
It's like an electric shot. I become quiet. I'm not aware. But you who are close to me will notice why suddenly, you know, I stop talking. And I ask your forgiveness because with the decision, I forget people I meet recently. But old people whom I've met long ago, eh? some of you old people here, I can remember you. But there are some events that I can't remember. And then last year, I was diagnosed with white blood cell in my urine. But I prayed for one week. I prayed. I told the doctor, you give me the medication, I'll come back to you. Because he wanted to do a scope on me. The scope was 8,000 ringgit. It was not the scope, those of you who are medical student, but it was my trust in God that he will heal me. One week later, everyone, my friend, I, I think I only told pastor, and my friends in close friends, and my ex-student, one of them who was going through a divorce, so I was comforting her, and I shared my medical ordeal. He, she published it on the class website. So I had WhatsApp from all my students, including Malay students. I was very touched by that. Because many of us, Malaysian, have this inherent prejudice against the particular race. And these two students impacted me a lot and touched me a lot because one of them say, I used to sleep in your class, but because of you, I'm now selected as the excellent teacher in Kelantan. If you go to the YouTube, you can see his teaching. And he's very particular about pronunciation because I taught him that. So he said, your first word, no, Fang Mei Li, who was my junior in convent school, also said, I used to go back to convent school to do relief teaching and she was in the choir. I conducted her in the choir and we went to KL. I think we won some prizes. But what Fang Mei Li said was true. You corrected my pronunciation of rendezvous. All right? Because I used to go to rendezvous with the boys. And, uh, and I pray that Teacher Christian Fellowship, Varsity Christian Fellowship will thrive even though there is a decline in the people, you know, participating in it. This test of faith in my medical ordeal made me closer to God because I realised He's merciful and His grace is sufficient for me. That week when I was so desperate, God touched my students. Eight of them overseas, Zoom called me on a Sunday, prayed for me. And I have students who video call me. I didn't even know what is video call because... I'm very digitally challenged. And this comfort and support from my ex-students, some are not Christian, really remind me God is merciful and God is really wonderful. My cousin, on hearing my sickness, drove down immediately to pray for me. Two of her friends came along. One prayed for me and the other one said, God told me to ask you to let go. What must I let go? I must let go of the world, the worldly pleasures. And I knew it because I'm still one foot in church, one foot in the world. You see me on, sun, on Saturday, sit there praying. Wow, you think these oldies are very religious. But you don't know my heart is a spring chicken. I'm traveling all over outside. <laughs> and one reason why I don't put my Bible in the phone is if I take out the phone, I might WhatsApp and look at my Facebook, how many followers I have. All right? So, let go of the world. And I would like to end by showing my, saying my appreciation to God first, my parents, my friends, this church, the young and old, the foreigners, the people who are not Malaysian, the Koreans, the Singaporeans, the East Malaysian. We are all family of God. And we are to bear each other's burden and Share our love. Do you know the person sitting next to me, baby, carrying a burden? Have you said hi to her or him? Number two, we accept everyone in church with love. When I was in England, Reading, the real Reading University, and also in Shanghai, when I was vice principal of the Shanghai Singapore International School, we have in, in England, we have churches with the gay and the transgender. And if one, one day, one step in here, what would be your reaction? If someone comes in a torn and tattered clothes, what is your reaction? And God also told me that we must appreciate 
the people around us, the church people, your parents. How many of you say, I love you to your father, mother? Oh, no, love, you're all Asian, very shy. But you can show in other way, in your action. My niece from Malacca, she's studying law in MMU, three days ago, sent courier two cheesecake to me. When the Grab driver came, give me two cheesecake. I was very touched because she knew I love cheesecake. Now you know. <laughs> All right? So please, appreciate your father and mother. Not on just Father's Day or Mother's Day. While your mother is alive or your father is alive. And in the church now, I would like to appreciate the wives of the LCEC member for sharing your husband with the church. When your husband comes back late, don't blame the church, blame God. Because they are serving God. We have Jocelyn, we have Carol, and the background people. We have Lynn, who did this beautiful decoration. Do you know that? By herself with her mates. Yes. And I must share, the world is so small. I used to visit Lynn's neighbour, and she was a teenager, I think, at that time, coming in and out of the house. But today, she's here. And I lectured her cousin, Sarah Tam, who is now in America. The world is really very small. Chao Wei, my Moa from sixth class, I mean, junior. Mei Li from Sigarmat. Nancy from the old days, where is Nancy? When she used to worship, in the, uh, when she used to stay next door to Johor Bahru Gospel Hall. I want to say thank you to my small group before, Alpha and Omega. We used to meet in Lin's home. And one of my friends who's now coming to our church when she's not in KL said, when she went to Lin's home, she felt her hospitality and her warmth. I want to thank the young people because they have brought life into this church. Ernest, where are you? And the worship team. All right? Play a bit faster lah, because I miss, I miss the American African church where you can clap and sing and dance. Remind me of my disco days. Okay? All right? And I would like to thank people of this church. Uh, Irene and Terence who gives leaves to me and who takes me out from Makan because Terence and I are foodies. Uh, yes, the Lord asked me to let go but this Makan part very hard. And I'd like to thank Mei Chan, my BSF leader, for coming to support me today and Chao Wei for uh, coming from his busy schedule because not only is he a doctor, he's a lecturer, he's also pastoring a Chinese Presbyterian church. So I'd li like to thank all of you and God's message for me and to all of you is to reconnect and connect. Reconnect with your old friends and connect with the new people around you. And to love all, be humble, treat each other with dignity. I used to look at these young people and say, ah lah, these young people, what do they know? We, the old one, have eaten more salt than you. Am I right? So I like to say we are all neighbours. Love thy neighbours. The Singaporean, you are my neighbour. I have to love you. No choice. Huh? We are the Roti, you are the Kaya. We are the Romeo, you are the Juliet. All right? And uh, the world is round. Appreciate people around. I like to say, last, I appreciate Pastor because when my friend's mother died, when she first came here, she asked me, can you get a pastor to come and conduct the funeral? Pastor and Mr. T went all the way to Kulaya to conduct the funeral. Not many people will do that. So I would like to end by saying that I surrender all to God, my worldly pleasures and, and uh, everything else. And also this morning, my daily reading was, do not be too rich or too poor. Too rich, you become proud. Too poor, you might end up stealing. Just enough, your daily bread. Pursue God with contentment. God the provider, and we are his steward. So be content, and once again, I express my thanks to all of you.